What's up, Earth's Mightiest Subscribers? It's Ernie, Blurred Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. So, I was sitting down the other day, and I was going through some of my comics, and I found Thor, God of Thunder, the run by Jason Aaron, the man behind the reinvigoration of Thor in comics going back to 2011 up until now. And he has done something very few people have. He has been on this book for a good long while. Eight years strong and working well on his way to nine and ten years strong. His work on Thor, regardless of how you feel about it, has sold so well he stays on that book indefinitely. So I wanted to talk about it, especially since Aaron is responsible for one of my favorite Thor story arcs. So it inspired me to break them all down. So here we go. Let's start with the first volume in Jason Aaron's run, The God Butcher, by Jason Aaron and Asad Ribic. But before we get started, it only takes two clicks to become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers. Click, click. When Jason Aaron kicks off this story, we are treated to three different points in the God of Thunder's life. We're treated to a young Thor who is petulant, a braggart, incredibly unworthy to lift Mjolnir, and more concerned with racking up body counts and legends than being the hero we know him to be today. We are given our current version of Thor as well, heroic, mature, and wanting to save everyone. And then finally, King Thor. The Thor at the end of time, who has become Allfather and for his trouble, lost an eye and an arm along the way. What a missed opportunity to call him Thor, the Full Metal Allfather. Long story short, the present day Thor, while answering the prayers of an alien race on planet Indigar, a planet in a deep space star system, discovers that this world's gods left. And Thor, being a god himself, is baffled at the idea of a world without gods. It just doesn't happen. So he's off to find them and then what started as a simple search and retrieve mission turns into a murder mystery when he finds the alien's gods mercilessly butchered. Someone is killing the gods of the universe, no matter if they be man, woman, or child, and leaving them on display for any and all to see. Things appear more ominous when Thor goes to Omnipotent City to search the Hall of Records and find out how many gods have disappeared. And the number is staggering. Thor can't fathom that one man alone could kill this many gods. But in the end, he travels throughout the cosmos and only finds more dead gods. All butchered like the ones before and each guarded by a monstrous shadow, a black berserker. And as he stands before yet another god he once knew and is now gone, from existence, he sees and fells yet one more of the Black Berserkers. And it's here we realize Thor knows precisely who did this. A man he once fought centuries ago, and he plans to make him regret ever having left the God of Thunder alive. And with the help of Iron Man and his satellite array, he's able to find the place where he met this assassin 1,000 years ago, only to find one of Gore's victims, a god named Shadrach, who once presided over wine and waterfalls, apparently. Or was it somersaults and handstands? I don't remember. Shadrach is of interest because he is one of Gore's victims that he let live. And Shadrach was driven mad as a result. And I mean, you can't blame him. Gore did remove all four of his eyelids after all, so I mean, you know, that's a thing. But Shadrach has something useful to Thor. A name. Chronix. But who or what is Chronix? Speaking of things that happened a thousand years ago, the younger and less mature Thor, still incapable of even budging Mjolnir and forced to continue relying on his trusty axe, Yarnbjorn, leads his Viking warriors across the Baltic Sea of 893 AD to fight for blood and glory, only to come across a lone man shrouded in the thickest fog imaginable and walking on water as if he were Jesus himself, hungry for god flesh and patiently waiting for Thor and his men to lead the way to the the other gods that they are prepared to do battle with. Only when the men arrive at what today is known as Russia, Thor finds no gods. But the warriors they came prepared to do battle with finally have a chance to rejoice when they see one of their gods coming down from the heavens, only they're mistaken. They only saw the spooked Pegasus of Perun, the Storm Lord, its body smeared with god blood, leading this young Thor to take the winged steed and investigate. He finds Chernobog the Black, headlessly riding his own black pegasus through the stormy skies, but fails to realize the Butcher of Gods behind him. Gore the God Butcher, 
armed with what were, at the time of publishing back in 2011, only known as Living Shadows and Darkness, but as of this year, we know for certain this is all black. The Necrosword, the first symbiote created by Null, god of the symbiotes. Its power emulated onto the silver screen by the Marvel Cinematic Universe's version of Hela. Gore wields it to create an endless array of weaponry to kill the gods that he hunts. Thor is a powerful warrior, skilled in combat, strong beyond belief, more than capable of felling another god, easily, even without Mjolnir in his hand. But Gore is another animal altogether. Gore seems soulless, yet passionately fighting for something, and it's the one thing he now lives for, the killing of gods. And as he prepares to kill this young Thor, the Black Pegasus of Chernabog the Black returns to get revenge for his fallen master, allowing Thor to break free. But as they fight in the heavens while falling to the earth below, Gore still manages to run Thor through for 20d6 backstab damage, while asking a question that fans of Thor Ragnarok should be quite familiar with. What are you the god of? As he muses whether Thor is the god of axes, drunkenness, vanity, war, biscuits, I added that last one, but it doesn't matter because he has killed so many gods of war he's lost count. He's killed gods of fear, gods of genocide and revenge, degradation, earthquakes, death, even gods of poetry and flowers. Though they were few in number, they died just the same. And as Gore prepares to end Thor's life, Thor whispers his answer. As the thunder comes crashing down into Gore, sending them both hurtling to the Earth's surface even faster than they were before. Even when Thor awakens a week later in a nearby hut of his worshippers, and now set off to find his attacker, he finds the Siberian god of the hunt, left mutilated and bearing a message for Thor from Gore himself calling him out to meet him in his cave. And when Thor actually does this, Gore was prepared and plans to make Thor suffer a long and excruciatingly painful death for having actually managed to hurt him during their fight, promising to make it last until the end of time. Speaking of the end of time, I've done at least a few videos talking about that subject, the end of time sector of the Marvel Universe, where Thor has become Allfather. Well, at this point, the Allfather is tired and weary, alone and grown so old, he's forgotten he's the only one left alive in Asgard. Other than Gore's Dogs of War, an army of which he must fight endlessly, and even when he defeats one, they just keep coming back by the thousands until eventually he is defeated, and they return him to his throne and make him do it all over again. Because as Gore promised, Thor is spared death and forced to live and suffer until Gore is finished with him. And despite Thor's claims that he will not die this day, and that Gore has yet to see the last of him, he begs the Black Berserkers to kill him once he realizes well, that they still won't kill him. Speaking of not killing, back in the far past, Gore still has the young Thor trapped in spike chains forged from all black, and no longer has interest in torturing Thor. Now, he wants to talk. He wants names, places. He wants to know how to find the gods of Asgard and Earth and, well, any other god that they may know, so that he can continue cutting a swath through the gods of the universe, and he wants Thor to watch it all as he does so. Thor won't relent, but Gore informs him that he's no slouch when it comes to torture. He once tortured a god of torture with great success, even convincing the same god of torture to give up the location of his own children who were in hiding. No matter their size, their pantheon or whatever they're the god of, Gore always gets what he wants. Because no matter how much they fight, Gore always shows them what they truly are. The same thing that everyone else is. Meat and blood and bone. And don't make the mistake of calling Gore a god. He once took his sweet time torturing a god for doing so, saying that all gods have their breaking points, and it took him just nine days to find that transgressing god's breaking points, and his skin was made of stone. After 17 days worth of torture, young Thor does manage to break free once his worshippers come barging into the cave, seeking blood and glory and death in the act of rescuing their god. And young Thor even manages to deal Gore a surprise surprisingly mortal blow, but this is Gore, the God Butcher, and this is the past, so we know he does not die as he explodes into bits of dust in the bright light. 
And make no mistake, young Thor recognizes this as well, that he simply teleported himself away from harm, and as the village folk cheer him and proclaim that this day will be legendary, he knows Gore is still alive and makes them swear to never speak of this day again. Meanwhile, back on Omnipotent City, Thor has returned and brought his new mad crazy friend Shadrach along for the ride to find the god Kronix. Only to find that Gore's Black Berserkers are there as well and have already put most of the librarians to the sword and the city itself to the torch. Fortunately for Thor, one yet lives and corrects Thor's misinterpretation of his mad friend's information. Kronix is not a god. It's a place, a hidden world whose location can only be found in one of the scrolls currently burning to a cinder as we speak, but Thor manages to read just enough of it to know where to find Kronix, the Palace of Infinity. And as he arrives, Mjolnir swinging before him, taking out berserkers left and right, he has a hard time dealing with Gore's symbiote all black, as Gore unleashes an arsenal of weapons against the God of Thunder before making his exit while the berserkers surround Thor. But as he breaks free of them, he realizes he's not where he was before. Nor is he when he was before. And what's worse, even though he arrived in the same spot Gore did when he displaced them in time, Thor got there 900 years after him. Thor has been positioned thousands of years later, back on Asgard just in time to witness his future self, about to take on the Black Berserkers once more. As both Thors join together in battle, they realize the Black Berserkers are starting to pull away, as Gore is making them return to him, because he's prepared to unleash his ultimate weapon, the very thing he went into the pools of forever back on Kronix to retrieve. He went into the time stream to go back to the beginning of creation and take the heart of an elder god. And with it, he can complete the god bomb, a massive weapon, almost the size of a moon and with a blast radius that could destroy any god in the cosmos, regardless of whether they're gods with a little g or a big g. Despite everything Gore has witnessed in life, he knows this much. There are only two kinds of gods, and he's not sure which he hates more. Gods who do harm, and gods who do nothing at all. And he's not sure which one he hates more, which one deserves his wrath the most. But it doesn't matter, because soon, there will be no gods. And that's the end of Thor, God of Thunder, Volume 1, The God Butcher by Jason Aaron and Asad Ribic. This story arc, and man, I know a lot of people hate on Jason Aaron because of the whole Lady Thor thing, uh, Jane Foster being Thor, Mighty Thor, whatever. I'm a go to that, man. You might want to chin check that shit, because, uh, man, this entire run is lit. And I even want to kind of quote uh, Donnie Cates, who I got to speak with at Memphis Comics Expo. Man, I don't want to live in a world where Jason Aaron is not writing Thor. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and be honest with you, because regardless of what you think. And I'm going to tell you right now, I was that guy. I was kind of that guy at first. I was that guy who was sitting there and it, it's, it's the same way people are with everything. Whenever there's change, nerds really hate change. And it's just, it's, it's interesting to me because as I've gotten older, especially, I've seen this happen. I, I was that guy. One of the writers that I met at MCX, Martheus Wade, we actually talked about this. He kind of used this analogy when talking about the DC Universe show Titans, talking about how when he first watched Titans, he just sat there with his arms folded, mean mug and acting skeptical and by the end of the episode he was like oh this is actually good and as he kept going he just kept softening like arms still folded but like the more he kept watching the more he was like oh wow my guard is up for nothing that is the same way i feel about jason aaron's run on thor overall like people are real mixed on there's people who love it there's people who hate it but i've noticed that the people who hate it probably didn't read it, but neither here nor there. Anyways, let me know what you thought about Thor God of Thunder Volume 1, The God Butcher by Jason Aaron and Asad Ribic. Sound off in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, Hulk smash that like button. And if you want to see more awesome videos like this one, make sure you click subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers and tap that bell so you know when I post up. And if you want to become one of Earth's mightiest patrons as well, swing on over by patreon.com forward slash blur without fear. And if you're chucking a buck, you can get some exclusive content. And if you don't want to become one of Earth's mightiest patrons, that's fine too. Hey, all I ask is that you like this video and share it with your friends. And who knows, maybe they'll become some of Earth's mightiest subscribers too. Anyways, thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and while you're here, go ahead and check out some of these other videos I got floating around here. But until next time, PLUS ULTRA!